And tonight we continue to follow up on the tragedy shaking San Antonio and the nation. San Antonio police continue their capital murder investigation of mom to be Savannah Soto and her boyfriend Matthew Guerra. The couple was found dead in a car at an apartment complex on Tuesday, three miles from where Soto was last seen a week ago. Tonight, police still searching for two persons of interest seen in this surveillance video. One person gets out of the pickup truck and exchanges something with another person who gets out of Guerra's car. If you have any information on this case, call SAPD and you can remain anonymous. The case is being followed nationwide and theories are floating around social media. That's not helping the situation that's not helping the process like all they're doing is slowing down the process. Savannah Soto's family says while they appreciate so many people wanting justice for Savannah, Matthew and their unborn son, they also say all the attention is overwhelming and at times hurtful. As Fox Essays Stephanie Esquivel explains, they are worried misinformation on social media could interfere with the investigation. You know that some person was involved or whoever was it was involved. We yes, of course, we ask that you come forward. But if you're just assuming or trying, oh, yes, this dude looks like him and he no, like don't need this. Savannah Soto's aunt Valerie Mendoza hopes anyone with information on who could be responsible for the deaths of Savannah, her boyfriend Matthew Guerra and their unborn son Fabian will step forward with more than 150 thousand members on the Find Savannah Soto Facebook group page. Mendoza says the rumors, theories, and misinformation going around needs to stop because she's afraid it could hurt the investigation. You're just slowing down the process and that's not going to help any like, you know, of course they have leads and they want to look into every single one. Because detectives are following every lead, Mendoza says she hopes out of respect, people will stop speculating about what happened. If you're not 100%, you know, about it, then we don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear it. Like, just let the detectives do what they need to do. And I believe from the bottom of my heart that they're going to get who did this. Instead of opening Christmas presents and celebrating the new year, the Soto family is now having to make funeral arrangements for Savannah and Fabian. It's something Eagles Flight CEO Pamela Allen is helping the family with. We're offering assistance and support for uh, the mom who's in charge of organizing burials for two of her family members. Anderson says the increasing national attention on the case is adding challenges. The vigil held on Thursday for Savannah and Fabian had much larger turnout than expected. We were we were a bit overwhelmed by the amount of people there. And then um, they expect the same response at the um, funeral and burial for Savannah and Fabian. I did ask the Soto family if they are considering a private funeral due to that overwhelming response, but family members tell me that has not been discussed yet. We will update the story as soon as we receive more information regarding the services. Reporting live, Stephanie Esquivel for Fox SA. Yeah, that, that is egregious uh, when, you, when you consider someone taking the life of someone, including uh, an unborn child. The killing of the couple stirs questions about the potential punishment those responsible for the murders could face if and when they are caught. Police call Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra's killings a capital murder investigation, the only crime eligible for the death penalty. Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez says when a prosecutor gets a capital murder case, they review the file and present it to the committee. I reserve the right uh, to seek the death penalty in any case that I believe. Uh, when I say I, I have a capital crimes committee and we all uh, have a vote in deciding whether or not to seek uh, the death penalty on any individual. But I want uh, the families to know that that potentially seeking the death penalty is a tool that is available in our tool belt. And that's certainly something that, that we will consider at the, um, at the appropriate time.
The DA says in his five year term in the office, his office has pursued death penalties for only two other capital murder cases. But since there are no arrests in the death of Savannah and Matthew, it is too premature to say if he will be seeking the death penalty. The couple had a past of domestic violence. Guerra was on probation for assaulting Soto last Christmas. Bear County officials say domestic violence increases by 20% during the holidays. Fox essays Marisa Mendoza looks into the driving factors increasing domestic disturbances. I always try to remind people never place blame on somebody who goes back because you don't know the reason they went back. Elizabeth Rahino is heartbroken. 18-year-old Savannah Soto was found dead. She was still carrying her son Fabian inside of her. As a survivor of domestic violence, she says it took her several months to leave her violent relationship without getting killed. There's protective orders in place. There's, um, you know, charges that have been filed. I've seen people go back. Court records show Soto's boyfriend, Matthew Guerra, who was also found dead with her, was on probation for assaulting her on Christmas Day last year. Police are looking for two suspects in the couple's murder. However, Rahino says the couple's turbulent past was a sign things have gone from bad to worse. Regardless as to what happened, her and her child are almost collateral damage in something. It, something happened and they got caught in the middle and they paid the ultimate price. Former district attorney Nico LaHood says violating protective orders between couples happens often, and the only way to remove it is to go back to court. If the person who the protective order is covering, meaning that they're, they're restricted from being around the person that's the complainant in the case, if nobody talks about it and brings it to the court's attention, then no one's going to know about it. Pre-trial officer is not going to know about it. The prosecutor is not going to know about it. And ultimately, the judge won't know about it either. Last year, 216 Texans were killed by intimate partners. 17 victims killed during pregnancy. 19 were teen and young adult victims. Not just the financial, but the kids running around sometimes create an additional amount of stress, both on mom and dad. Alberto Bustamante, program director with Family Violence Prevention Services, says domestic violence increases 20% during the holiday season. Season. Violence is the only outlet that some of these parents um, know how to deal with the additional amount of stress. He adds Soto never asked their organization for help, something Rahino is not surprised to hear. It's really sad um, because, I mean, everybody, everybody's looking at it. You know, she's an adult and she's 18, but that's really just an age. She is still a baby. She was so young and she had so much potential. She had dreams and she had hope and, you know, all of those things. and. It's it's awful from the northwest side. Marisa Mendoza Fox SA. We will keep you updated as the latest details come in at FoxSanAntonio.com and on all of our social media pages. You can also download our free KABB news app in your app store.